Hey, and welcome to this video. Many modern day applications and websites rely on the user uploading both images and also downloading these images too. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can do this using the HTML canvas. So all I have here is a basic starter. We just have a index.html page inside of a image upload folder. So to start, we're going to add some basic HTML into the body section. And this is simply going to be a canvas element, which is going to be used to display the image. And we can also grab the contents of the image to download this later on too. So we can target this. We're going to give this an ID also of canvas. And then the next thing we're going to do is to add a label, which is going to be for our uploader. So the text is going to be select file. And then after this, we'll add a input. And this form input is going to have the type of file. So the user can select an image to upload. Also an ID, which is going to be uploader. And then finally, a button. This button is going to be so we can download the image, which has been placed on the canvas. So for this simple example, this is all we need to do. We just need to add some basic HTML and the majority of the work is going to be inside of our JavaScript. So we could create a separate JavaScript file, but for simplicity, I'm going to place this inside of the script section inside the body. And the first step is to create some constants. The first constant is going to be for our canvas. And this is simply going to be a reference to our canvas element just above. So we can do this by grabbing the document. And then we can use any method we want, such as get element by ID. We can use query selector. Anything is perfectly fine. So this had the ID of canvas. And the second one is for our context, which is equal to our canvas variable. Dot get context 2D. So what we're doing here is grabbing our canvas element. And then after this, inside of the second variable called CTX, we're grabbing what is called the rendering context. This will give us access to a range of drawing functions so we can manipulate what is on the canvas. Here we declare and we're using the 2D functions which are available. And then this CTX variable is going to be what we use each time we want to draw to the canvas. We're not doing much in the way of drawing for this example. All we're going to be doing is to be uploading an image. But if you were to draw some different shapes, lines, or anything such as that, you would use this with CTX. Okay, so now with this in place, we're going to create two more variables. And the first one is going to be the reader which is going to be equal to a new file reader object. This file reader allows us to read the contents of files. In our case, it's going to be the user uploaded images, which is stored on the user's computer. This is what's going to allow us to use this file uploader input, which we added before. After this, we're going to create a new constant, which is for our actual image element. We'll use the new image constructor. So right now we have a empty image element, and this is just the same as when we create a new element with document.createElement. For all of this to work, we're going to create a function, and I'm going to call mine upload image. And this is going to take in the event information. So inside here, we're going to access our reader, which is going to be responsible for reading the contents, which has been uploaded by the user. So we can access the reader. And then a method which is called read as data URL. Read as data URL is going to be used to read the contents of the user's uploaded file, or in our case, the image. So how do we know which image to access? Well, this is available from the event information, which is going to be passed to our function. So we can access the file with e target. We can access the files. And since we're only going to be uploading a single file, we can access the very first one inside of the array. And now we actually have this file data. We then want to set the image source and place this on the canvas. So before we actually do this, we want to make sure that the reader has finished loading. So we can use reader.onload. 
once this has happened and finished loading we're going to trigger a function but just before we set this image to the canvas we want to make sure that our image constructor has also finished too so for this we'll also set on load which will trigger a function which is going to be responsible for placing our image onto the canvas remember before we mentioned we have this ctx variable which is going to allow us to draw onto the canvas in our case we only need access to the draw image method and we're going to place our image variable onto the canvas this is the empty image which we created before and then we're going to set this at position 0 0 this is going to be placed at the top left of the canvas and next we're going to set the width and the height of the canvas so we could allow the canvas or the image to be a fixed size but what i'm going to do is to allow the canvas dot width to stretch to be the exact same size as the image so we can access the image width and then do the same for the height too so the canvas dot height is going to be set by our image dot height so at the moment we have a function which is reading the file input we then wait for all this to finish loading and then we're setting this image to the canvas but one thing we are currently missing is the image source we need to actually place the results from our reader into our image so to do this we're going to access our image and set the source attribute to be equal to the value of our reader dot result with this function now in place we actually need to call this once the image has been uploaded so first of all let's grab a reference to our input and store this inside of a constant called image loader so document and we'll grab the element by id which was uploader we're then going to use this element of image loader and then listen for any events with add event listener the listener is going to listen out for any change event which is going to be triggered when a new image has been uploaded once this happens we then want to run our upload image function so this is it now for our image uploads so let's copy the file path to our index.html and paste this inside the browser we can now choose a file from our machine let's grab any random image and we can upload this this particular image is really big so the canvas has stretched to be the full size as the image so now to actually download this and make use of the download button which we also added in the HTML for this we're going to create a function down at the bottom and I'm going to call this download and for this we're going to access the contents of our canvas variable and then use a method called to data url to data url is going to get the image from the canvas and return it in the default png format this format can also be changed to other formats such as image forward slash jpeg and so on i'm going to leave this as the default png however and then store this inside of a constant called image next up we're going to create a constant which is called link and this is going to be equal to a new a element so document dot create element and the element we're going to create is a a element so a a element is a html link and we can download the contents of a link by adding the href attribute so the link dot href is going to be equal to our image which has been extracted from the canvas we can then give this image a name with link.download and this download attribute is going to be a string so i'm going to call this the image.png this is going to be the default name of the image once this has been downloaded by the user finally we're going to simulate a click with link.click and this is a javascript method which effectively gives us a result of a user clicking on a download link without the need to prompt the user to do so finally we need to call this download function once this button has been clicked 
So we can access the button with document dot query selector. Let's grab our button. We can then add an event listener, which is going to be a click listener, which is then going to trigger our download function. So let's try this out. We can choose a file. Open this up. And now if we go to the bottom, click on the download button. And this is not working. So let's take a look. And I've done what I always do here. I always put the lowercase R and L. So let's try this. And let's give us a refresh. Choose our image and click on the download. And our image has now been successfully downloaded.